if you're studying for the CBMT Certification Board for Music Therapist exam, this video is for you. So I was inspired to make this video because someone commented on one of my previous videos sharing that they are studying for this exam right now. So it brought back a lot of memories, not necessarily the most positive memories because it was quite an arduous journey for me passing this exam. So that's why I really want to share these three tips um, and I really hope it helps, helps you. So the first tip is to join the MTBC study group on Facebook. So this group was founded by a music therapist in the States and there are a plethora of resources that people have shared on this Facebook group. And it was really helpful because not just for the resources, but the community and feeling that, you know, you're not alone in going through this exam. If you failed it once or more than once, it really helped um, with the self-esteem, the self-confidence and so getting support from others that you're not alone in failing this exam. And it, this exam, is, it's really not a fair way of evaluating you as a music therapist. So that being said, uh, join the group. And then the second tip is to purchase both the practice exams on the website, preferably the form B, and go through the questions that you get wrong and figure out what happened. Why did you get it wrong? What did you miss? Uh, so that it's a very good study tool, the practice exam. And then the third tip is my golden nugget. It is to practice the verbal sections of the GMAT or MCAT practice exams. So I was really lucky enough to have these resources because I have two sisters and one sister, she's in the sciences, so she studied for the MCAT. My other sister, she's in business, so she studied for the GMAT. And now these exams are very science focused or business focused. So it's nothing related to music or music therapy. However, the wording for these verbal portions of the exam is what really, really, really helped me. So I know from my training, my master's, my undergrad, that the lacking music therapy knowledge was not it. It was my skill, not knowledge, but the skill of taking these standardized exams. So a way to practice this skill was to try out these GMAT and MCAT verbal sections, such as critical reasoning and reading comprehension. So critical reasoning was what I did more of, um, and that was really efficient because you would read the statement, whatever they're asking you, and again, not music related, but you would read the statement and follow the prompts and try to figure out what argument um, supports the prompt or goes against it and really understanding what the question is asking you to do. Because on that music therapy exam, you will be asked to pick the best answer or the most important answer or the first answer. Uh, so it's always knowing what is the best thing. And like in therapy or psychotherapy, there really isn't right or wrong best answer scenario, but it's a standardized exam and they need a standard. So that's why learning how to take these exams and practice um, being able to pick out words and knowing, oh, this is what they're looking for, or really understanding the grammar in the sentences to get what they're asking you to do was what really helped me. And I learned through my multiple takes on the CBMT exam was that that was the thing that I was lacking personally. Um, I hope it gives you hope um, and know that no matter how many times you write the exam or fail it, it really doesn't determine who you are as a person or as a music therapist. Because at the end of the day, it really is it just an exam. Now, this is something that I had to go through myself. Um, but just acknowledging that it's okay. It is just an exam. It doesn't define you who you are as a person or as a music therapist. To conclude... 
join the MTBC study group on Facebook, purchase form B and practice what you get incorrectly, and lastly, practice the verbal sections from the GMAT or MCAT exams. So that's all for now, and I will see you guys next time.